My name is Michael Moritz, and I'm currently working for the Joffrey Ballet as a rehearsal pianist and one of the conductors. But long ago, I was the music director for Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood on PBS. I worked for Pittsburgh Ballet Theater as an assistant conductor and a composer in residence. Fred and his wife Joanne were subscribers to the ballet there, and that's how I, they were first aware of me. Fred had a lifetime collaborator, musical collaborator named Johnny Costa, who was a crazily talented, fiendishly talented jazz pianist and musician. Uh, towards the end of Johnny's life, he got quite ill and he had cancer. When Fred was worried that Johnny might not make it through a shoot because he was so sick, uh, he called me to stand by. Um, so sadly, right before this shoot took place, uh, Johnny passed away. So uh, I was definitely called in to uh, substitute for him in the, you know, under maybe the most emotional circumstances because everybody who had known Johnny for all those years was devastated. But then I continued with the show for another five years of the show and I continued to be uh, Fred's music director for other things he needed to do until his, I would have to say, really untimely and surprising death. The, the challenge and the great enjoyment of doing the show was that we just kind of improvised as we went along, just playing to whatever Fred was doing. You know, we would, uh, we would punctuate with lots of diminished chords. That was the trolley, which was in every episode, because Fred was deeply musical and he majored in music first before he went on to, you know, become a Presbyterian minister, which was where his master's was, and in child uh, development. And he wrote all the songs, which people didn't necessarily think about. But the music was such an important part to him of how he approached communicating. His goal was direct communication with children. And um, a lot of it is lyric-driven in the sense that he's saying very straightforward things that he felt that kids needed to hear. It's you I like. It's not the things you wear. It's not the way you do your hair. But it's you I like. The way you are right now. The way down deep inside you. Not the things that hide you. Not your toys. They're just beside you. I think his whole life was kind of dedicated to finding in the other person the value there, recognizing it and bringing it out. We saw that on the show that was geared towards children, but if you were somewhere with Fred and somebody came up to talk to him, he would always turn it around so that the conversation was about that other person. It was extraordinary to watch him relate to people, and it also set like a standard that those of us who knew him always felt like, well, we can't possibly do it like he does it, but we should try to do that more often. And it's one of the things that seems to resonate now with this kind of renaissance with the documentary and now the Tom Hanks movie, is that we, we seem to be living in a time where finding the value in others and being able to you know, give and receive equally is something we desperately need. His presence still on television and then his renewed presence in the media these days, um, it's comforting because it means that it didn't really come to an end. He didn't really come to an end. <laughs>